A Chinese spacecraft has made the first successful landing ever on the far side of the moon. And this is what it looks like. This image was sent by the probe Chang'e 4, which made what Chinese officials described as a soft landing early this morning. The probe is equipped with a rover and measuring devices and is also carrying seeds for an experiment in cultivating vegetables in a closed environment on the lunar surface. The mission is seen as an important step as China develops its space program. Well, for more now, let's bring in Keith Cowling. He's a former rocket scientist and editor of the blog NASA Watch. Thanks for being with us this morning. First of all, what made it so difficult to land a probe on the far side of the moon? It's never been done before. No, it hasn't. And we've done it many times on the near side of the moon because we can have direct radio contact with that because we can see that side of the moon. But on the far side, it's blocked from direct radio contact with the Earth. So China had to put a relay satellite around the moon so that it could see the Earth, so that the spacecraft could talk to the satellite, and the satellite would then talk to Earth. So it adds an extra layer of, uh, of complexity. Okay, so it's a bit complicated, but why is it scientifically significant? What do we learn from all this? Well, first of all, the landing location is very interesting. It's in von Karman Crater, which is inside a larger crater called the Aiken Basin, which is a monstrous crater that's bigger than any crater on anything in our solar system. And it was so deep that when it happened, parts of the original lunar crust may have been brought up. So that's where the probe landed, and it'll be the first time anybody's landed there to take a look at it scientifically. So that's the most important thing. Now, China did not offer a live broadcast of this event. It uh, only announced it once it was done. Why the secrecy? You know, I was actually on CGTN about two hours before it landed, and everybody assumed it was going to happen. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe they just wanted to make sure they got it right, or, you know, I, I don't know. But all, as soon as they knew that they'd done it, they uh, uh, said so. And even the NASA administrator tweeted a congratulation to them a minute later. So uh, once they did it, they told everybody. Okay. Uh, now, China lands on the far side of the moon here. We've got India about to launch its second moon mission. Why are these developing powers investing so heavily in their space capabilities? You know, that's a question I actually ask a lot because here in the States we say, yeah, yeah, we did that 50 years ago. And why are these other countries doing it now? And I guess what are they learning that we have forgotten? I mean, it was a matter of national pride for us back in the 60s. And now this sort of, sort of seems to be the, the gold standard for being a, an advanced technological nation. China's done it. Uh, Japan has sent uh, probes to the orbit of the moon. Uh, Israel's about to land a commercial lander on the moon. So as they said in the 60s, you know, the, everyone's going back to the moon. And apparently that song is going to be a hit again. Okay. Keith, thank you so much. That was Keith Cowing there, an editor of the blog NASA Watch. Well, America's space agency has also achieved a space exploration milestone. This one, billions of kilometers from the sun. NASA's New Horizons probe sent the first detailed images of the space rock Ultima Tula. The pictures show what what it looks what looks like a giant snowman. NASA has described it as an entirely new kind of world. The frozen rock at the edge of our solar system is the most distant object ever explored by humankind.